A botched concrete foundation job at our rental investment property leaves us taking two steps backwards. Well, everybody don't want to take a uh, jackhammer and jackhammer this thing down. That's, that's, that's the worst thing that could happen. To say the least, things aren't exactly going according to plan. Then we would be starting from scratch. Yeah. The one thing we are in control of is the work we are doing ourselves here at our off-grid property. The final beams are getting installed on our home, spring is on the way, and we are about to find out whether or not the newly poured concrete walls can stay or need to go. Are we going to have to tear down the walls or not? Yeah. So we're gonna get in the soffit finished up and I always got some beams at the front side we gotta get installed too. But this was a, little, a hair too long so we cut them down a little bit and now it's time to torch them. All right, that's good. No, I don't think so. You got this? I almost fell. You did better than I did. <laughs> so the one missing piece after all this time on the front porch, aside from that light, which we did finally get in, has been these last two remaining beams right on the very front. And we've needed the lift to be able to get those installed because it's just too high off the ground for any of our ladders, and probably safety wise. Because yeah. we both are going to have to be up there, I guess, holding the ends. Yes. So, no better time than now when we have the lift and this is going to be our last project with a lift anywhere on this portion of the a-frame yes i wouldn't bet on that it is it is once we're done with like with the soffit and those beams like that's it there's no more lift you're right there shouldn't be one now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's very exciting you know exciting. it's coming to an end it is it does come to an end. we're almost done yes <laughs> We're gonna get landscaping next, <laughs> right? Please. <laughs> Measure everything, it took three or four times. Um, that measurement, 87 to 7 eighths, note to self, make sure I keep my mock-ups in the same spot. I lost one, so I have to figure it out, but it should be good. Let's hope, fingers crossed, because I got two pieces left, we'll see. Go. Get it up in the air, girl. We ready? Hey. Yep. <laughs> I know. <laughs> He's looking at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> this is so okay. I got it. Okay. Good now. Yeah. 
It's more fun when I do like this, yeah. Guys, I hate to brag, but I didn't have to do any meal planning or shopping because Every Plate did the shopping and planning for me, so I can just jump straight to the cooking. This video is sponsored by Every Plate. Every Plate cuts out trips to the grocery store and stressful meal planning so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes. Choose between 17 recipes that change each week and swap proteins, veggies, and sides to your liking. Every Plate's ingredients come carefully packaged and pre-portioned, helping you save money and reduce food waste, like with that bag of mixed greens that you throw out almost every week pre-portioned so we don't have that issue anymore. While most meal kits come with a premium price tag, Every Plate offers delicious dinners that won't break the bank. Like this one that I'm making tonight, honey dill chickpea bowls. It's literally six simple steps and I'll be able to pull dinner together in no time. Give you a little extra. Thank you. Just because I love you, okay? No, 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 no fights yet. We gotta try it together. Try Every Plate for just $1.79 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering code WILDWONDERFULOFFGRID179. Oh yeah. That's everyplate.com and code WILDWONDERFULOFFGRID179 to try Every Plate for just $1.79 per meal. Let's eat. How is it? Delicious. <laughs> it's really good. It's banging, dude. It's amazing. Mmm. This is so good. <laughs> and I really mean it, too. He really does mean it. <laughs> cool. Mm. See you later, guys. Yeah. So I have some news. I don't know that I would necessarily call it good news, but it's news of some sort, and that is that Josh just got a call back from the testing facility who is going to be testing samples of the concrete from the concrete walls that we had poured over at our Trout Pond property. So he's been waiting to hear back on whether or not he can drill the samples himself rather than having the company come out. We're hoping that that's going to save a little bit of the cost on this whole situation. And um, if he's able to get the go ahead on that, then we are going to head over there today and get the samples drilled because we've got rain coming in tomorrow and we wanna be able to stay productive and keep the ball rolling on everything. As a brief recap, for those of you who might have missed what happened, we own a piece of property about a half hour away from our personal home here in West Virginia. We're building a short-term rental property there, and most recently we had some concrete walls poured. We are now questioning whether or not those walls are structurally sound after having caught numerous errors on the part of the concrete contractor when he was pouring the walls. 
We now have quite the mess on our hands and it's up to us to determine what the next steps are going to be. It's just like that we're in this really messy place right now where it's kind of been like one thing after another. Like the cat, okay, like we're, we'll handle the cats, we do what we gotta do, but you know, when you're already kind of at that point where there's so much going on and then everything just goes to hell with the concrete, it's like... That's the way it is. <clears throat> you ride high for a few months, everything's great, and then you... Everything goes <laughs> for weeks. You pull back out, up and down, it's life in general. I know, but when are we pulling out? Because right now we're on hopefully, a nice hope, dive. Hopefully hit rock bottom now the other day. <laughs> hopefully, we'll see. If, if we hit it, we had to tear that wall down, that's when we hit rock bottom. Then we'll pull out next day. Okay. So, when the test come back. I mean, look at all this. The entire way down. That's definitely a weak spot right there. I have a feeling over time, over the next year or so, if we keep it up, it's always going to crumble off just like that everywhere. Sage is just... We'll see. We're going to core drill right now, though. All of these, like, water stains? Oh, my goodness. What is that? It goes all the way down. So the next step for us is going to be getting some samples of the concrete and having those tested. The company that Josh has been in communication with was going to charge like $830 to come out here, um, do the core drilling and do all of the testing on the samples. However, we're actually able to save a good chunk of money and I think, did you say we're going to spend $180 for samples, total yes. Yes. for the samples by doing it ourselves? So we were able to rent. A machine from our local tool rental company just come out here Josh is gonna do the work himself we will drop it off and then we'll be paying like hundred and sixty hundred and eighty dollars I think it's like sixty five dollars per sample um, and then of course the cost of tool rental rather than the eight hundred some dollars having the company come out here and do it so and another we're into it for 240 bucks we're into it for 240 bucks total that's with the tool yep yes so Another cost incurred on this whole mess of a situation, but... We gotta do it. Yes. So, they, I actually called the, uh, the plant that shipped the concrete out here and dropped it off and they pumped it up. Um, the PSI on the concrete walls, they poured, there was a 5,000 PSI mix. So, he put a lot of water in here. Um, we're, we're gonna test is a PSI of that concrete. So if it's 3,500 or above, we're gonna go ahead and keep it. If it's below that, it's coming down. So that's the big question. Are we gonna have to tear down the walls or not? Yeah. We're we'll about see. to find out. So I'm getting ready to start drawing. I gotta draw three holes. Um, I'm gonna draw a hole in each wall. So I'm gonna start up high right here. I'm gonna go to the midpoint on the back side, And then on the other side over there, I'm gonna go low. So just to see, where they put water in and how much. I'm not sure if they started out a little bit thicker and then with balls of wall, tons of water or not. But I'm gonna drill them all out and I'm gonna label them one, two, and three. So I know they test them which ones are the weak spot, if it's weaker down low or up high or whatever. Um, I'm just hoping they all pan out. That's what I'm really hoping for. I really don't want to take a uh, jackhammer and jackhammer this thing down. That's 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 the worst thing that I got throw. Right, let's do it there. So here's the first one. It looks, I mean, it got poured over three weeks ago. Um, so it's wet a little bit. You can see there's still aggregate all throughout there, though. So it didn't sink all the way to the bottom? No, uh-uh. I'm just worried about the test. 
See if that thing will crush or not. Yeah. At the proper PSI. My guess is gonna fail. This drill rig right here has a spot for a hose. So you put water on it, water comes through, and goes onto the bit and it keeps the dust down. And it makes it a lot more pleasant to drill. But I don't have the tank, don't have a hose. I have this, it's perfectly fine to use when it's dry. The only problem is that it creates a lot of dust. But that's why I got this guy. So now we're in the second hole. We're gonna come about halfway down here. Once we get him done, we'll go on the inside and go a little bit lower. Sample number two, just tire things messed up. Then we would be starting from scratch. <sighs> yeah, so. <laughs> we'll make it work though. Is that, is, that a, is that a laugh of complete and utter frustration or? I mean, when, you're, when you come here and you represent a company with a group, crew of guys and you put yourself off as a trained professional at concrete, and you put this crap in, an electrician and his wife comes through and do the job you can't do, it's pretty pathetic. That's my, that's my complete and utter opinion on it. It's pretty pathetic. And you're not a concrete guy. I am. <laughs> the electrician's wife is the concrete guy. <laughs> Little did you know. <laughs> that's true. This is what a concrete guy looks like. I never thought 40 could look so good. <laughs> I'm not 40. <laughs> the, Yet. the sweater says you are. <laughs> It got hot! <laughs> I got all the stables drilled and I went through and labeled each hole. So the next thing I'm going to do is set my uh, laser up. And just to verify, because I can tell the top of the wall is going up and down in spots, but I'm not sure if they put the footer level or not. So if the footer is uh, like this a little bit, that means this wall is going to be lower than the wall to my right. It's going to be kind of like this and wavy. So we'll see. You never know this guy. <laughs> You're over an inch out from here to here. So you do see that wave is so nose for it here. It's definitely it's about an inch and a quarter inch and a half out roughly from here to here. So that's pretty messed up there too, but it looks. But looking at here at that wall right there, it's not bad. You know, it flushed with the hair, but I mean, that's what's gonna be what's what it is. It should have been finished flush on top, but it wasn't. So that wall. We're low, about an inch right there, and it fluctuates all the way across, up and down. So it's up and down, inch and a half the entire way down. So you see that right there? How it's cracked the entire way up. And it looks like over there, each spot where there's a uh, where a panel went at, there's a nice, good, healthy crack. It's healthy. That's not. I mean, it's a visible crack. It's not. It's not a good thing. So yeah. <laughs> so I'm honestly just really frustrated with the whole situation and tired of dealing with it. And um, I, I've tried to like put this in a concise way and <laughs> to tell you guys about this like so many times. But the, the, the easiest things I could say is that we're getting the samples tested. Yes. We're going to see how it all comes back on that and, and deal with the ups and downs in the walls. Yeah. And 
um, in the contract, it did state that there was to be rebar. Yeah, continuous rebar through the footers and also the walls. So he knew better. It was in the contract. He put it in the contract to save his butt to say, hey, it's documented. We have that in there. Um, but he tried to save money by not putting it in there. So. Yes, and, and it's proper protocol. Anyways. Yeah, it's common practice. Right. Correct. So um, we're not going to publicly announce who this company is, and that just comes down to um, harassment. Yep, it's a local issue. So we're going to put it on the, all the yard sales on Facebook and the, all the communities around here so everybody knows about the company and how their shadies can be. Yes, we're making re reviews on Yelp, anywhere yep. that we can make it on um, people that have watched the videos that actually live locally have already mm -hmm. come to us. We've personally told them what the name of the company is. Mm -hmm. um, going to Better Business Bureau, contacting agencies that deal with contractors, their licensing, their practices. All that good stuff. All of that kind of stuff. Yep. We're just going to handle it as like Josh and Aaron, a local community member, not like, you know, a social media platform that blasts it across the country and then results in this person getting just an insane amount of harassment. And Correct. that's just what we feel is the best yep. way to handle it. And we're not suing them or taking them to court. The reason why is um, I'll take, pay lawyer fees. It's gonna cost me probably five grand taking the court. I'll get stipped in the money if I win, which we would win. I would get stipped in the money and I'm paying the lawyer and I'm also out on this and I'll get stipped on everything, so. Yes, because keep it. in mind, we're a couple weeks down the road here and we can't get in touch with the guy. Yep. At all, like no voicemails, no, like he's just disappeared. Yep. So he's not going to pay us. Yeah, we gave him a 50% deposit. Right. We didn't pay the entire thing. Yes. Um, I doubt he'll even contact us for the rest or come back <laughs> do anything. So my, my, I think he's gone. I don't think he's gonna come back. Yeah, but if he's not and you're watching this video, you're fired. <laughs> That's all I got, fingers crossed guys. Hopefully this yeah. ball works out. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make it work out on our own. Look at Leon, he's chasing Millie. Get her, Leon, show's boss. <laughs> She's faster than him. I don't get this beam installed before it gets too dark. I already took my mock up up there, got it marked, measured everything. So let's go ahead and put it on here and cut this and install it. He's not burned on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! How'd that happen? Oopsie! <laughs> we got all the way up there and we realized that we didn't torch the right side of the beam. So like the side that was gonna be actually facing in towards the roof was torched, which is pointless. And uh the side we needed to be torched off this he wasn't torched, so we gotta fix that real quick. <laughs> I think we're ready now. I think so. Yeah. Let's put it up. <laughs> No. Do what? Too much. 
long. Are you serious? Way too long. It's too dark. Oh. We're done. I'm gonna go see. Okay. I can't lose your tape measure. Fail! <laughs> it's not my night. So, it's a hair too long. I can't even see up here to get a tape measure out to measure it. Yeah. So, we tried. Good evening, good night. We'll see you tomorrow morning. <laughs> Come on, Chucky. Let's go inside. Come on, guys. It got dark fast. It did. I feel like we had a lot more time. Yeah. Now it's about 8 o'clock now, right? 